Neil, have you enjoyed your midwinter break? <laughs> Not really, because I've been in training every day other than that. I wouldn't mind if I've got some sun on my back, but uh, no, nah, it's obviously frustrating, but it's, it's, you can't beat the weather. You say it's frustrating. Is it frustrating because you have been training and you've not known in advance that the games are going to be postponed? No, because, yeah, that's, that's part of it. I mean, it's frustrating because we all just want to play football and we want to tick off the games and the points as we go along, but um, you know that they're going to come and hit you somewhere else in the season. Um, but obviously, you know, both times we've prepped, done match prep, done all our work, homework, picked a team, named the team, trained the team, and then you go in and you, you lighten the load ready for the game and then the game's not on and you have to plan accordingly after that. But we, we were in Sunday, we trained Sunday, um, had a good session yesterday and now started the prep for another game which I'm a lot more confident will be on. Are there any advantages from not having a game in over two weeks apart from it's been the same for everybody I suppose? No, I don't think so. I think I'd rather have the games on the board than the games in hand. Um, you know, we, we, the boys are training hard and working hard and you feel like you're in a, a, you know, a decent place and you just want to play games and tick them off. I'd rather be, you know, having played both games and got some points, being sitting up in whatever it could be, 14, 15th in the league and, and feeling good about ourselves. Instead, you're, uh, you're down around it, but you've got games in hand. You're right. It looks as though the game will be on temperatures, double figures, but we know it's going to be extremely windy. Tomorrow, gusts of 50 miles an hour again down at Oxford tomorrow night. How big a part does that play in your planning? Should we play under head height? I think that's the only way to do it. Um, yeah, I mean, we tra it was windy today in training. Listen, I can't put a training session on or, or pick tactical a tactical element to counteract the wind. You know, it's just something we're going to have to try and manage on the day, and both teams are going to have to manage it. And sometimes one manages it better than the other. Um, we we'll pick the team. We know, you know what we need to do and the level of performance we need and hopefully we have to factor in the wind and, and, and use use that to our advantage or, or make sure it isn't to our disadvantage. How do you factor the wind if it, if it, is, if it is a bit of a problem, it is, as Gusty is saying it's going to be? Yeah, I think I mean, we, we had it to be fair, probably to a lesser degree at Bournemouth. Um, you know, we tried to first half, we knew territorially Bournemouth played a, play a territorial game and we knew we had to stretch the game and into the wind and make sure we got down the pitch and we didn't. We kept playing um, into their hands and, and because of that territory we spent a lot of the half in a, you know, in our own half. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll assess it, we'll look at the conditions when we get there and uh, you know, hopefully the lads will learn from what we didn't do well at Bournemouth. Do you have to try and keep it on the surface as much as possible to try and try and take a little bit of the conditions out of the play? Yeah, you, you need to do that, but there's also an element of if you're trying to keep it on the surface and the opposition decide they're going to press you high, you've, you've got to be, be willing to get beyond that press and, and get yourself into their half. So there's loads of different factors that will happen when the game starts and prior to the game in the warm-up, but we'll get there and we'll assess it. And uh, you, know, you don't want to try and change your whole game plan just because of, because of the wind. You're just going to have to manage the conditions the best way you can. You had a decent performance, decent result against them here just a couple of months ago. You'd be hoping for something relatively uh, similar, I would have thought. Well, the result, I'd take the result now if you if you offered it to me, of course. Um, you know, I think they had, I know they had injuries. I don't know how close they are to being back fit. People like Josh Ashby, who's a very good player. Um, Parker was away with uh, international duty, so these players come back. Um, but, it, you know, I try not to focus as much, you know, obviously we, we respect all of the opposition uh, and how they play and where they can cause us problems, but for me it's about the level of performance we need, um, the energy we need, the aggression we need, the compactness, the team ethic, the spirit. If we can get them things right, then, you know, you give yourself a great chance of getting a result and that's really what we focus on. They've lost a couple of players as well, haven't they? They've gone back off their loan spells and gone out elsewhere to football league clubs. They're struggling, they've only won one in six or seven games, whatever it is, towards the foot of the table. But they're a part-time team, I think lots of people would probably suggest they are the smallest club in this league. So even to be competing with the likes of York City and the other clubs in the National League, they've done an amazing job. They have, I think managers done an exceptional job last season. I know Justin Well, who uh, you know does a lot, runs a club director, football type role. Um, for their budget, for what they do, for, for where they are. They have done an incredible, incredible job. I've got a lot of respect from, um, and I think they're a slightly different animal at home. I, you know, I've watched a lot of their home and away games, and the away games have been a lot tougher for them. But at home, they know their pitch well. Obviously, being three G, and they've put it on teams uh, aggressively. And and you know, in some games, they've really caused teams problems. So um, 
I don't think any game's easy. I don't think we're strong enough to think any game's going to be easy. We have to earn the right to, to get anything from the game tomorrow. Do you think more than any, any game then, maybe this season, it is a good place because we know there'll be a small crowd as well. You've got to win that battle before you can win the war. Yeah, you have to. You have to. I think away from home, in any case, you, you've got to go with the right mentality. Um, and I think, by and large, I know we haven't, I know, I know we've drawn quite a few, but by and large, I think the boys have gone in with the right mentality. We haven't been loose and open and not done our jobs without the ball. I think we've tried to do our jobs. I think our defensive stability has been a lot better. Um, you know, we need, need to sprinkle a bit more quality in there. Um, but, um, you know, we're fighting for our lives and let's not forget that. And Oxford are fighting for their lives and Kidderminster had a great result on on um, Saturday. So, you know, we like I said, we need sort of 20, 22 points uh, from our 19 games at least to give ourselves, make sure that we, we get where we need to go. And with back-to-back -back away games, do you set yourself as targets? Would you take four points if they're offered to you now? Is it no? We want to win this game, then we want to win on Saturday. Um, I, I don't really break it down. I just look at, you know, the points per game that we need. So, you know, for me, we need to get sort of 20, 22 points minimum from the 19 games. And, you know, you're going to have your Chesterfields in there and, and your Solios and your Barnets and your teams up around top, Bromley away, tough places to go. So there's some games you think we might have a better chance, but I just fit believe if we put a high level in performance in, in as many of the games, and that's where the squad might come in, particularly when the games become Saturday, Tuesday, we give ourselves a chance. And uh, by and large, more often than not, the boys have been consistent with their work without the ball. Uh, perhaps at times with the ball we can we can add a bit more quality, but we've got to fight for our lives. We've got to run for our lives, and um, and hopefully the quality of the player can 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 take us forward. You told us on Friday ahead of the weekend that it was maybe going to be a tweak on the system, but it would have been the same eleven players that played last Tuesday. Is that still the case? Is this still going to be the same eleven that you would have played last Tuesday, last Saturday? Now it's been pushed forward to tomorrow. Um, Potentially it could have been, although in training today we've got uh, one of the players uh, emotionally, he's had a bit of bad news, family, personal reasons, So, uh, and I could see he, he, he sort of stepped out of training at one point today because he was, it got to him. So um, I think from my point of view, and that was quite sort of late on in training, uh, from my point of view I think that person might need to be with his family. Uh, tomorrow and for a couple of days and therefore we might need to make some sort of late tweaks despite sort of working on the shape and working on the system but uh, the empathetic side of me needs to do right by the person not the football player. Yeah because at the end of that that is most important. Yeah family is most important uh, you know I've been through it myself recently so um, you know this player needs to be with his with his family I think and that's the call I'll probably make so it, it, it will tweak slightly from what it was going to be. But apart from that, everyone else seems to be okay. Everyone's fine. They're working hard. Um, you know, like I said before, we're trying to push down Batty and get him back into the throes of everything. Um, and we, you know, the injury list has, has started to come down a little bit. The um, you know, we've got a few more players that have gone out on loan, although a couple have come back. You know, so we feel like we're we're getting stronger, and um, hopefully we can show that in our results. How hard is it when you're dealing with someone like Dan Batty, who I'm guessing in, in himself is desperate to get back and prove to you what he can do? That you have to say, no, we have to follow the right pr protocol and procedures here. You cannot push it. Yeah, I think he knows that. But we've helped along the way with him. We've had, you know, we've sat with him, we've had meetings with him, we've put programs in place. The new sports scientist Paul Armstrong has, has worked really hard with him. Uh, building him up and he's like I said before he's now on the verge of he's, he's training but non-contact so uh, you know we had him in yesterday he trained really well yesterday but we kept him as a spare player throughout the whole session and uh, the other lads knew that they couldn't go and wallop him during training but um, I'd like to think by the end of this week start of next week he'll be back into training full and then it's down to him to show how fit and strong he is and, and you know how close he is to match sharpness for me to have a decision mate. And you mentioned at the artificial surface tomorrow night. Your thoughts on playing league games on those? Does it concern you? Are you bothered? Um, it's, personally, when I played, I didn't didn't like playing on them. Um, do I think they're like uh, they 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 rep, you know they replicate grass and the and the quality of game you get on grass? Uh, possibly not. That's my opinion. But I do see why clubs would have them. You know, financially, training, um, you know, what it brings to the community. I, I kind of get all of that. Um, 
if whatever happens, we've had to train on 3G quite a lot this season, so there'll be no excuses um, from me about the surface. Um, and let's just hope it's a good game and the boys play the way they can. Great, thank you. <coughs> the game was called off late, uh, obviously, at the weekend. You prepare it specifically for each game. How much do you have to write off and how much can you take for because it's generic? Um, well, there's certain things that we might do that are generic, like as part of our principles of our play. But, um, yeah, you know, the qualities that Fylde might have might be slightly different to Oxford. So you have to bear that in mind when you're, you're tweaking certain things. You know, every game is different. And I always try and start any conversation with the players is um, this is how we'll win tomorrow. Or this is how, so when we're doing our work... These are the things we work on. This is how we win. This is where we think we can gain advantage. These are the things we need to be aware of in respect to the opposition. Um, I, I, when the players cross the line, they're the only people that can do it. But I like to create all the scenarios so they've got all the answers. And it helps me then from the side to help them because we've already given them the answers. They've trained the answers um, rather than me trying to find the answers uh, while the game's going on. How have the players reacted? Do, how do they react? Because obviously they're hyping themselves up for the game. Um, do they go stir crazy or do you have to take them down? How does it work? It's a bit, it's, it's, it's a tough part of it, you know, and uh, I, I won't ever make any excuses. It, it's, not, it's not an easy part to, to bring them to a boil ready for a game and then deload. You know, like yesterday we had a really high intensity training session, but we totally come away from any match prep because that's all we've been doing lately, where it's been shape work and match prep and, and opposition analysis. Um, we come away and we just put two teams in, said there's a forfeit for the loser, loads of different scenario type games, and we wanted it competitive, we wanted the edge back on, um, and, and we got that, we had a great training session, and the losing team had the forfeit, and then we kind of stripped back to today where we went, right, now we're focusing back on tactical elements. Um, so you've got to give them that sometimes, and the lads enjoyed it, but it was just a break away from total focus on, that, on one game. Oxford have lost a couple of players since they last played, including striker Sanderson, who's obviously key. Uh, to what extent does that spoil your preparations? Um, I don't think it spoils it. We, you, you, when you look at a team, you don't just, I don't look at just individuals and say, right, well, that player can cause a problem. You have to look at the, the way the team play and what they do, whether <coughs> their full-backs play high, whether they want to get on, whether they overload you in certain areas, how they play out from the back, where their strengths are, what type of goals they score. Um, are they physical? Are they quick? You know, like I said before the Fylde game, Fylde are a very athletic team. They're a very high-press team. So you have to be aware of that. It's about them as a team rather than the individuals. And within it, you've got, you know, you might have a Nick Horton at Fylde who you know can do good things. You know, you've got a McEachran at uh, Oxford who can do good things. Josh Ashby's a good player. So you, you, there's players in there and you know their qualities, but it's about what their team brings and how you counteract that. So I'm sure they'll be looking to do some loans and replace. And you never know, they, they might have an announcement at five o'clock tomorrow that we're not ready for, but we'll be ready for what they bring as a team. With the break, it's given some players a little bit more time to recover fully. How's Depot? Is he now back to probably full fitness? Yeah, Depot's back training regularly now, so I'm hoping the games that he's played, the 60, 70 minutes that he's had, um, you know, even with Will Davis, you know, Will, uh, Will's been sensational since he, he came in, but we've taken this lad out of part-time training and he was going to work as a job and brought him into full-time training where we're loading him constantly. Even Will will benefit from you know, having a breather at some point to keep his legs fresh because them last 12, 10 games of the season, we have to be physically um, strong finishing the season like a train because that's when it's really, really going to matter. You've spoken about your sports scientists and obviously your data analyst as well. Are they absolutely key now as a foundation for the club? Yeah, every club. I mean, there's so many things weren't at this football club uh, four months ago that are now, um, but there's still more we need, you know, Joe Stead, our goalkeeping coach, does a lot of our an analyst work because we haven't got a full-time analyst. You know, even the training ground, the facilities don't really cater for, for a full-time analyst because we, we've barely got an office space. So there's lots of things that need to improve in the summer. There's lots of things we have improved now. But going forward, that's my intention is to put in the, the foundations for, elite, for an elite football club that can really, really go forward. And uh, that's not going to happen overnight. Ex-Premier League manager Phil Brown is now at the head of Kidderminster. How much is that an endorsement of the league? Well, I think even Paul Cook, 
being at Chesterfield, you know, Paul Cook's was working at a high level and everywhere he's been, he's been successful. And, you know, when he comes to Chesterfield, he, he thought it was the right club. Um, you know, you said Phil Brown, obviously you've got Phil Parkinson had gone to, to Wrexham and he's now, you look at, because, you know, and I've said this before, there's a lot of clubs at this level that are ambitious, that really want to drive, not only get promoted, but drive up the leagues, Wrexham being one, Notts County, people like that. But there's also a lot of clubs in the league where you go, oh, I might want that job because it's a league job that maybe have been a little bit stagnant for a while and sort of been a sort of mid-table, bottom-of-table team for years. So, you know, you have to be very careful. There's a lot of ambition, particularly in this league, and it's a really, really tough league to get out of. Yeah, and Kidderminster are going to be wanting to get up that league now as well, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. But again, you know, and I've said this before, I know they were bottom, but the data that I collect and I look at when I analyse all the teams down there tells me that anyone can get pulled into that bottom four and anyone can get out of it, you know, and I know people might look at the filed and go, well, I look at filed, I think they're a really strong team. Uh, now, whether they can back that up with the results is a different matter, but Phil Brown will give Kitty a, li uh, a lift, I know Phil well. Um, is he going to be able to get them, you know, 27, 28 points that they need in their remaining games? Um, that remains to be seen, but I think everyone will be fighting for their lives, which is why I, I really hate it when people say, oh, York City will be all right. No, no, not until we're beyond 50 points. You know, good luck for tomorrow. Thank you. Hi, Neil. Um, first of all, obviously, you've not had uh, games recently, but is there any substitute for Max Sharpness or are the lads all a bit rusty for tomorrow? No, I don't think that would be an excuse. Two weeks, they've missed just over two weeks. They've trained hard. Um, I just hope it hasn't. You, know, you hope you haven't lost that good feeling we've had from the seven games in the league, and you know being you know being able to stay unbeaten in that period. You want to try and keep that going. So I hope that they take that out there um, in, in in the performance. But uh, as a manager, sometimes you never know what you're going to get. You know, you you train them hard, you focus them, you get everything right, and uh, it's down to the boys tomorrow when they cross that line. Yeah, and Oxford City have lost six of their last seven games uh, in all competitions. Uh, are you perhaps able to exploit a lack of confidence in their, in their squad right now? Um, I don't look at it like that. I don't look, you know, I, I, you could say like Dawkins lost 5 0 before they come to play us, and people say, oh, they've lost 5 0. How does that affect you? Well, I think they're then wounded and they're going to come out and do something different to get a better result, which they obviously did against Gates to win 1 0. Um, I don't really look at the opposition like that. I just look at it as if we're not at it, if we're not doing all the good habits we've managed to do. Um, over the course of the last uh, month or, or, or so, um, we're, we're, you know, we're, we'll be out of this game before it started. Oxford have beaten uh, Bournemouth four 0 at home. They've beaten somebody else four two at home. They've walloped some teams, and I think that they'll want to have the ball. They'll they'll be confident on their pitch. They'll see this as a game they can win, um, and we've got to make sure that when they come off the pitch, they they think, wow, what a tough game that was. I know Ross Jenkins obviously came up against him well. When Oxford came to York in the season, but have you got any real past relationship with him? No, I mean, obviously Ross had been at Watford as well. He wasn't there the same time as I was as a player, but he, he came in our office after the game and we had a good half an hour together and a beer. Um, I think he's done an amazing job. It's an amazing club. I know Justin um, Merritt there as well, who's done an amazing job. So I, I, I like stories like that and the Dawkins stories. I think it, it's great, the ambition and the work that they've done at that club and, and I hope he goes on to bigger and better things. But at the moment, he's he's got to continue doing a fantastic job at Oxford. Uh, and you've had an extended period of time, obviously, in training. Has there been anyone who stood out to you or impressed in that time? Um, no, I think they've all trained well. They've all trained hard. Um, it's you know I feel like for the first time this season I'm I'm looking at the you know the squad and the subs bench and the starting lineup going well I could play him or I could play him um, even on the bench you know I'm looking going do I need a goalie on the bench because before I had keepers on the bench because I didn't think I had enough good options on the on the subs bench before but now I've got you know I'm struggling to even fit five outfield players on there. I actually think, well, blimey, I could pick any one of eight that, that maybe deserve to go on the bench. So I've got, I'd rather have them decisions and be leaving players out um, that, that I'm disappointed to have to leave out than maybe what went on earlier in the season where I was scratching my head and putting people, putting people in the squad just because of uh, numbers. Yeah, and uh, obviously it's been quite a while since we last talked about them, but they come back from the lot of Cedric May and Finn the Barnes. Uh, are they pushing for to be involved in the squad tomorrow? Well, I mean, they've both been training well now. Um, 
They've both been named in a 17-man squad, or an 18-man squad, should I say, for the last two games. That doesn't mean they necessarily were going to get their place on the bench, but it, they've both been named in them squads. Um, I think it's a case of watch this space. You know, They need to get in, they need to show what they can do, they need to make sure their work ethic's where the lads have got it to now. Um, but yeah, they're, they're both options. I mean, Cedric's had interest from other clubs as well. Um, there's been a lot of interest shown in Cedric. I think obviously his loan spell went well at Blythe. Um, so, so yeah, you know we have to watch his space. I think if Cedric gets to the point where he feels he's not getting his opportunity, because I've now got five forwards, whereas only had two at the start of the season, um, then then that might unfold in a different way. But for now, they're all fighting to try and get in the team. Yeah, it's funny you sort of mentioned the sports science side of things because Paul Harmson obviously is coming in uh, in November. He's had got a good experience with Sheffield Wednesday, if I'm correct with that. Uh, what are you hoping he brings to this sort of side then? Because I think the others came in the first mention wanting to follow Brighton or Brentford sort of models. Are you hoping that's the first step towards that? Well, Paul, Paul's more sports science, which is the, the fitness of the players, the conditioning of the players. You know, we I think we all know we had an injury list of about 13 players. So uh, we know that we've advertised for a physio to come in and s support our medical team. So there's things we're trying to improve. It's not easy to get people, but Paul's already shown his qualities. You know, we've, we've kitted out the new gym at the training ground. He's put programs in place for the players. And the most important thing for me as a manager is the trust. And, uh, you know, when we discuss training and loads and who should be doing what, Paul's got an opinion. He's got an opinion I value highly. So that's what I need from my, my staff. Um, Matt Lever is the uh, data analysis when it comes to recruitment. And again, another person who's working incredibly hard behind the scenes. We've tried to push him to not rush a lot of stuff, but, but, but sort of speed the process up so that we could do what we've tried to do in the last couple of months. Uh, but then there's a longer, longer process going into the summer to make sure that we've got um, the right players on our list going into the summer. Uh, the last one from me then as well. Uh, Kevin Phillips has been hired as Hartlepool United manager. Obviously, you're going there at the weekend. Uh, have you got any thoughts towards that appointment? This is always tough when the new manager goes in at a club. They get, you know, that automatically gives that club a lift. Um, so, you know, we'll wait and see. But again, you know, my job's to focus on my team. If we can go to Hartlepool next week and put a high level of performance in, then, you know, Kev Phillips has got a get the very best out of his group as well and that you know we didn't last time we played Hartlepool so we'll need to rectify that um, so yeah so good luck to him um, but obviously uh, we need to make sure we're up for that challenge on Saturday. Does it make it harder for you to prepare for those games when you don't quite know what new manager is perhaps going to implement? Possibly, possibly because there's not a theme there, there's not a playing style there yet, um, he might change things around a bit so possibly but again my job's to try and create all the scenarios, make sure the boys in training know all the scenarios and then make sure physically and mentally we're ready to, to put our best foot forward. And, and we've done that of late. We've just got to try and keep it going. Perfect. Thank you very much.